I'm Alice in Wonderland and you're watching the AU Review. Excellent. And you just wrapped up Bastille supporting slot. What was that experience like with such a massive band? Um, those guys are incredible. I love I love that band. I love the people in it. And Foxes is also an inc incredible woman and artist. But if I'm going to be honest, and I don't want to like ever lie to anyone, um, I didn't really feel like the crowd at the show got what I was doing. <laughs> so it was a little bit like kind of brought me back down to earth when I was playing them. But I mean, like, yeah. Support slots are always are always tough. But it was it was just more like I don't like I was I didn't want to compromise the type of music I'm playing and the type of music I'm into because it was a you know an, a, a more commercial audience and I think like you know there were some people there to see me and I'm just I just didn't want to compromise because like fuck that and um, yeah I think like a lot of people just didn't like that type of music but that's cool like whatever sure it was definitely like interesting to. That was like the hardest, that, that was harder than like doing the warehouse parties in terms of just like trying to genuinely stay into what I was doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like the Bastille guys were backstage like, like getting into it and they all knew their shit. They're so good, they're so smart and yeah, like I love them, yeah. And you're about to head off on the, how do you say it? I've seen 30 Rock. The Rural Tour. Yes. Uh, the rural Georgia. Wow, yeah. it was really intense. Um, yeah, I, I, I've done like a few dates already. I just like really, um, ever since doing Groove in the Moo last year, I really thought that, yeah, rural shows are totally overlooked. And I do a lot of capital city shows. Um, but it was just like, yeah, something I wanted to do. So yeah, I'm stoked sure. I'm doing it. Do you feel any pressure now that your music is meeting more people to make the tours bigger and bigger and bigger? Like no. I mean, like, I played, like, a 300 people venue the other day. Like, I'm not really, like... I don't get when people... I don't get why people think they're too good to play shows like that. Like, some of those shows are the best. Like, it's intimate. And, yeah. Okay, what would your ideal tour be then if you had an unlimited budget and you were uh, planning everything? Uh... I don't know, but like the other day I thought it would be cool to play like at Questacon. <laughs> when I was in Canberra, I was like, fuck, I wish I was playing at Questacon, not at a club. Is that um, the one with the, like, the giant it's guillotine? It's like a science and the, museum. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I have, like that. an earthquake machine. <laughs> That'd be so fun. That'd be crazy with the lights down and tripping out. I would love to do that. Yeah, that's something that um, I'm going to... Nah, I don't know. I, I like, to be honest, I'd like to play... I'm, I'm happy with the warehouse parties. Mm. I'm pretty happy with what I've done. I don't know, I can't think of anything. Maybe out of space, that'd be pretty cool. Out of if space. I had a limited budget. <laughs> Why Just not? get rocket ships and fly everyone to the moon or whatever. Okay, so what does the, the rest of, <laughs> of 2014 all be then? <laughs> Flying to the moon, I like it. Okay. Just hiring unicorns <laughs> and shit, because that's Why real. Not? Yeah. Okay. Budget's unlimited. Mm -hmm. um, but after this tour wraps up, what's next? Um, I'm going to the States. Uh, again so I'm going to the States in two weeks like to work on some music and then I head back to the States in October to do some more shows there excellent and then who knows you know what like it's such a weird question to ask me where I'm like what's next because you know if you'd asked me what's next in January I would have given you a completely different answer to what's next what, what actually is what actually was next you know so I don't know like I can't tell you then that's the beauty of like, I guess what I do. Excellent. <laughs> and also the fucking scary part. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I have one last question for you. Yeah. What is it about Belvedere Vodka that you like so much? It's Grey Goose. It's Grey Goose. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. I swear it was Belvedere. No. Oh, no. I've just made an egregious error. That's all right. Um, I also drink that. I don't know. Like, to be honest, um, I like drinking straight vodka better than mixed stuff I don't know why I think it's like the Slavic background that I have in me deep down but um whoa that was like thunder like god being like <laughs> um I don't know if anyone else heard that that'd be awkward if like no one else heard that but there was a huge crash after I said vodka um <laughs> and uh he obviously prefers tequila clearly. yeah like fuck um ugh, tequila Anyway, uh, yeah, and, and when I'm on stage, I don't really like having a glass next to the equipment. So the only reason I've got a bottle next to me is because I like straight vodka and I don't want it spilling on the precious equipment. So it's kind of a nerdy way to look at why I drink like that, but it's true. 